Hello everybody, my name is Rick and I will be talking about version 3 of the Critical Security Controls. I was part of the editorial panel for the version 8 of the controls and have been part of the editorial panel for a number of years in working on other versions of the controls. So this is the third in my series. <laughs> One and two will be in the description below as, as well as a link to the CIS Critical Security Controls page where you can download your own copy to follow along at home. Critical Security Control number three. Number three is going to be a big one. You know, data protection used to be number 13, but it moved up 10 spaces to the number three slot. So why did it jump from 13 to three? Well, because data protection is so important. Um, originally, honestly, we kind of had it moved up to seven and we were somewhat in a stalemate among the editorial panel, whether or not, you know, moving it up to three was too drastic. I mean, we're doing a lot of changes in version eight already and whether or not this would be just too big of a leap and too much of a change. But when we put it out to the uh, public for comment, everyone just unanimously said, yes, it is so important. It needs to be number three because data protection is the core of everything, right? Everything that you do from the controls for access management and, you know, and um, identity management and configuration management and vulnerability management and everything comes back to protecting of the data. So we felt that it was need to be number three. Data protection was that important. Number three is going to be a really deep one. Buckle in. This is going to take a while. We have 14 new sub controls. Well, now they're not all new, but 14 sub controls. And I'll get into some of the movements of not only how we went from 13 to 3 with data protection, but also some of the others. So let me move over so I can get this big chart up over here to talk about a bunch of the movements of the controls. You know, so if we follow the line from where we are here in 13 for data protection, the blue line moves it up to number three. You know, but I put this together, this whole thing, this put, I put this whole chart together to be able to kind of show the movements and help people understand the differences. So we had taken away three controls and we added one, um, number 15, which I'll be getting to you in a few weeks, I guess, um, you know, service provider management. But the three that we got rid of kind of got combined into some other things around configuration management and network configuration, things like that. So the dark three that you see in the dark orange are the ones that disappeared completely. The lighter orange are ones that we combined. And so you see that, you know, control of admin privilege, you know, the uh, account um, monitoring and, and management and control and the um, control access based on need to know all got consolidated into, you know, number five and six, which are about identity and access management. And so we'll be getting to those very soon. So we can see in this chart here that, you know, a lot of movement happened. We consolidated some, we got rid of some, we added one, and that's how we went from 20 to 18. So I just want to get that out of the way for when I come back to talking about number three. So let's dig into the safeguards. So as normal, I will put number seven on his left and number eight over here, and we'll go in through, and you know, first thing we're gonna see, obviously, is that we went, you know, from, from nine to 14. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is one of the rare ones that we added safeguards to it. But let's dig into, you know, some of the changes that we made. We reorder the safeguards to make sure that they go with the different implementation groups. You see that it, again on version seven, they're kind of mixed up and over here, they're nicely organized by implementation group one, controls two, and then three. Obviously I've said before, we increased from nine to 14 and you'll see how we kind of added some and, and took some away and, and, and kind of divided some up again, because we want to make sure we have one ask per safeguard. So, Getting into it, you know, we inserted number one, 3.1 here to establish and maintain data management process, kind of a data governance process. Uh, we updated what was 13.1 to include, you know, establish and maintain data inventory. You know, we removed 13.2, uh, you know, remove sensitive data or systems not regularly accessed. Since this was more of a configuration management issue and also, you know, more than one ask, we asked for systems and, uh, you know, as sensitive data and systems. And so we want to make sure there's one ask per safeguard. We move 13.3, monitor and block unauthorized network traffic to control what is now control 13, network monitoring and, and, and defense. We added 3.3, configure data access control list. We remove 
I'm pointing in the right direction here. <laughs> um, only allow access to authorized cloud storage and email providers. Again, more than one ask per safeguard. And we felt that this is, again, an access control topic and wasn't really clear about what it was asking for when we say, you know, uh, only allow access to authorized control cloud and email. Um, so we added 3.4 and forced data retention. That kind of goes back to the governance thing we talked about. Um, we removed 13.5, monitor and detect unauthorized use of encryption. Again, that's more of a security monitoring topic. And again, not clear what the ask is. You know, is this related to encryption of applications, a browser, you know, SSL version, you know, versions, you know, from a regulatory issue? It was kind of all over the place. And and don't get me wrong, it's like, I was part of version seven. I signed off the green saying, yep, that makes sense to me. But now looking back at it, you know, it was like, okay, I'm not sure what we were asking for there. We added 13.5, securely disposal of data, again, from data governance, combined 13.6, encrypt mobile de device data into 3.11, encrypt data at end user devices. So not just separating mobile devices, but endpoints and any endpoints or portable devices. We move 13.7, manage USB devices, which kind of overlap with 13.8, uh, manage system of removable media, read white configuration. That's a lot of words there. And we just moved them to control 10 about malware defenses. Um, it was also like not a very clear uh, sub control before. We added 3.7, establish and maintain data classification scheme, data governance. We added 3.8, document data flows, which I'll get into a little bit later when we get into details. We rename 13.9 to encrypt data on removable media, and it's now 3.9. We added 3.10, encrypt sensitive data in transit. Now that we know that we have sensitive data that we defined in 3.1, right? Um, and then, you know, 3.11, uh, encrypt sensitive data at rest. 3.12, segment data processing and storage based on sensitivity. Again, now that we've established sensitivity, then we can now do some of these other things. 3.13, deploy DLP solution, data loss prevention. Now notice that's only an IG3 safeguard. And that is about like identifying any kind of, you know, regulatory issues where data might be dispilling or insider threat. And then we added 3.14, log sensitive data access. Now, there was certainly a debate of whether or not this was an audit and logging audit and logging ask, you know, but this is an IG3 safeguard. And the use case for this is something like, you know, protecting intellectual property, you know, like the Coca-Cola formula, right? You know, we want to know how who access it, when they access it. And then also in larger companies and in merger and acquisition, we have made date, maybe have data rooms and and when case that we want to know who who's accessing data room when they access it and things like that. So that's, again, kind of fall. We felt that was more of a data protection thing than purely just a, a regular commodity monitoring, monitoring and audit thing. Okay, now let's take down these two things and put up the big one um, that goes into the details of, of, of the um, of the control number three. So data protection, you see a lot of these are in the, um, you know, cybersecurity framework of identify and protect, uh, you know, clearly, because we're talking about data protection. Let's go into 3.1. So this is a new safeguard. We wanted to make sure we put in details about data governance, you know, what should be in a data management process, what data sensitivity levels, you know, putting in some data sensitivity levels, data owners, data handling, data retention, data disposal, all of these things in a standard data governance process is the foundation. You know, 3.3 and 3.5 and 3.7, you know, are supporting specific items in this data management process we develop. And 3.6, we call out device encryption, which interestingly we didn't have before of making sure that all that, you know, except for on mobile devices. And this lists examples of different end user encryption options, you know, on Windows, Mac, Linux, any other endpoint. And 3.8, we talk about documenting data flows. And so what this means is that what applications are using sensitive data, what third parties might we share data with? Uh, this should include the entire life cycle, such as, you know, backups and, and data destruction, you know, because knowing these data flows help support the encryption requirements, right? You know, if we know that they're going to places that are not safe or not protected, then we need to may have to may have to encrypt it. 3.9 to 3.11 break out the specific areas that require encryption, you know, specifically talking about encrypting data at rest, data in transit, you know, um, and, and, you know, data on removable media. 
And then 3.12, we include the segmentation of data. And now this again is tied to data sensitivity that we defined up in the governance process, right? You know, make sure that you don't mix critical data, you know, you know um, such as like your finance data with some non-critical data, like maybe your directory of your company newsletters, right? You know, or maybe the conference room scheduling system. Um, though probably back when we had Lotus Notes, we probably did have our finances with the conference room scheduling. But anyway, that's another video. But this is, um, you know, something that that is, is kind of fundamental in making sure in segregation because it helps in protection, also helps in logging and response and monitoring and all those other things. So 3.13 and 3.14 are specific for Insta group implementation group three. Um, now we're recommending data loss prevention and logging of data access to sensitive data. I mentioned some examples before, but this also could be, you know, from the database or, you know, uh, privileged assets management platforms. You know, those of these, both of these are also very useful when doing investigations if something goes wrong, right? You know, because DLP can, you know, A, prevent unintentional data spills or block or log intentional attempts, um, you know, and data access log can prove that, you know, unauthorized access happened or that it didn't happen, you know, which is often a regulatory requirement, you know, prove that it wasn't authorized you know, access. So both of these support a mature data governance program, which is why they're only kind of defined for implementation group three. So now let's look at the upfront material, put that down and we'll put the upfront material back over here. So you'll see that we updated the overview to focus on data governance and data process. And the previous description in version seven, six, even going back as far as I can remember, you know, it was really just about data exfiltration. Oh, here's what it said before. I mean, purely about data exfiltration, not about like the management of data. So I specifically remember when we added the add-on after the comma there and ensure the privacy and integrity of sensitive information, that was about five, six years ago in version six when we created the privacy addendum and the privacy impact assessment. So we felt that was a really good uplift, which is also why we have, you know, 14 safeguards to be able to define what that means. When we talk about the why, uh, why this control is critical, we talk about how data isn't just in one place anymore, especially, you know, with cloud and mobile. Uh, it's being accessed from all kinds of different locations and it can be very temporal. And, and so we need to understand how to protect it. We touch on privacy where it differs from data protection and that privacy is the appropriate use of data based on consent or regulation that the data is under. And we talk about that there are many industrial, industry, national, and international privacy laws that we need to consider. There is discussion about data exfiltration, since that's still the thing, <laughs> even though we took it out of the main point of the overview, you know, exfiltration from attackers and from physical theft um, and from portable devices. However, the most common data loss is from user error. And so, which enforces a need for the encryption, right? <laughs> um, so when we get to the next page here, and we talk about procedures and tools, we enforce a need for a data management program, such as described in 3.1 of the safeguards. We mentioned that data pro breach process that support incident response and include compliance team, communications procedures, and if there is a disclosure requirement, um, you know, to your regulator or to your customers um, based on SLAs and contracts you may have with them and data protection. Uh, and we'll finally end with a discussion about segmentation of sensitive data, which I had given some examples before. Then uh, at the bottom here, you see we have some links to other data protection publications from NIST, the Cloud Security Alliance, and the CIS Mobile Security Guide. So hopefully, this was helpful. <laughs> I know there was a lot of changes to this and I gave you like the first view and you may want to go back and look at that screen of all the different things that change, you know, as we get further down to see how we went from 20 to 18. And, you know, even though this is probably like the longest one, I have a feeling that application security might be long too. Um, but, you know, that's 13 episodes away. Uh, I wanted to get over this and go over the changes and see the sequence from, from some seven to eight. So if you haven't already, please feel free to go download the controls, you know, from the cissecurity.org. And I have the link in the description. And if you want to participate, we have a workbench on CIS security to be able to pose questions. Um, you know, you feel free to ask me things here, but, you know, if you really want the team to be able to respond to influence next versions, then, you know, please uh, use the workbench that we have. I mean, I'm happy to get in a discussion about any of these things anytime, but Hopefully uh, you have a great day and I will, oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I guess I've been forgetting to say that. That's bad YouTube form. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. 
So today we're closing with one of our figures we affectionately call Boo. Uh, we named her that because it looks like she sang Boo. And like the other figures I had posted, they look good in a Santa hat and with bunny ears and with a witch's hat and things that we de decorate for different seasons. But hope you enjoy it. 